Good morning, church. It is always a wonderful thing to escape from the hustle and bustle of the outside world and come into the presence of God. Welcome to this sanctuary and to those of you who are tuning in on Facebook Live and YouTube. If you have any prayer concerns or uh, joys that you want lifted up, uh, fill up the pink sheets, uh, pink slips at the pews, or if you're tuning in online, just write it down in the comments and they will get to the pastor and he will be able to lift them up during our time of prayer prayer. And now the peace of Christ be with you always. And let us all rise as we are able as we join in our call to worship, printed on your bulletins and on the screen. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. And please remain standing for opening hymn number 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Wow, what a great morning. Hello, church. Okay. Uh, let me briefly explain to you about foundation of the worship service. And then we are moving on to the joys and concerns. Worship is not about you watching the performance. You came here to worship. You came here as a participant of a worship service. Our worship service have a certain movement, you know. <laughs> As we just praise God, the movement goes down and up, right? Our voice going up. That's a movement God, was, God is looking for. And when I preach, it's, we can picture a movement from up and down. Just like, you know, God is giving us the message that we need to hear. So up and down is movement that we experience in our worship service. And here's the joys and concerns that this movement goes sideways. Like, so it's like a cross, up and down and sideways. That's the worship service. So uh, I'm sure you are, you know, you have that uh, foundational concept, but that's the worship service that we are participating right now. So, oh, this is time that we share joys and concern, and the movements go be like this, okay? Even though you're not doing it, I'm doing it. <laughs> okay, so let's not forget, once, when we praise God, his movement go up. And uh, when we go do, we're going to do the congregational hymn, anthem, uh, later, we tried the last Sunday for the first time, and this goes up too. And uh, since our choir is not fully back on yet, so why we all sing together as a uh, congregational choir? Okay, so that's the movement we have to keep it keep in our mind, and uh, as we pray or uh, worship our God. Let's move on to the joys and concern. And first, I wanted to. Say thank you for all the people who come and help and participate our outreach uh, community uh, lunch yesterday. Uh, that was great. Uh, we had a really amazing food prepared, and uh, everybody who came really enjoyed the food and the fellowship. So I really uh, appreciate it. And uh, again, last Sunday, I emphasize on the, we need a outreach lunch coordinator. So if you feel like uh, God is calling you to that ministry, it's not really hard. It's hard, Kathy? No. Okay. <laughs> Just uh, put in your organized skill, right? So that's what we need. So please uh, step up and then volunteer for uh, coordinator. Uh, that will really help us to uh, make this vital ministry uh, moving forward. So please uh, uh, come to me and talk to me about it. And uh, we had a, a Lenora's uh, graveside service last Monday, and uh, Stacy did a great job, and uh, uh, we had a really meaningful uh, service. We celebrate the life of Lenora. So uh, please continue to pray for the Plows family. Uh, and then uh, we have some other uh, family members who uh, lost their loved ones. Uh, Eisenhurt, uh, Dennis Eisenhurt. Uh, the first time uh, right after I came uh, start ministry here, uh, Zeki, Zeki passed away. So I had a really struggle with a, a last name, but uh, let's remember Dennis and uh, keep him and family members in your prayers. Alvin Austria, uh, you probably heard it. The, the eldest brother passed away uh, because of the heart attack, right? Stroke. Anyway, uh, we need to keep continue to pray for the Austria family. And uh, we have uh, uh, Linda Untalan. Uh, 
uh, our longtime uh, church member passed away last Monday. Linda in Thailand. And uh, we're going to have a funeral service here at church September 6, 1030. So please uh, remember uh, Lin Linda and Talan family in your prayers. And they continue to pray for the Lin, Rene family. Lin lost her brother in the Philippines. So, I mean, it's really hard. I cannot imagine, you know, your family member passed away it's far and not able to be there. This is really heartbreaking. So uh, please pray for Lin and Rene and Lin's family as well. Uh, we have uh, some prayer requests. Uh, we have Joy. Uh, congratulations to Scott for 40 years working with a Northrop uh, Grandman. 40 years this week. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you. Now I'm struggling. Uh, okay, continue to pray for the healing of Arthur Abi Abiral. So uh, Florence put, put in a request. And then uh, Judy uh, put a request. I really appreciate Judy that uh, she typed up prior to coming to church <laughs> so that I can read it. Uh, uh, pray for Reverend Kathy Binder who is uh, recuperating from the hip fracture. Uh, 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 she's in rehab facility, so uh, help uh, keep praying for her, uh, for healing. And uh, pray for the, all the people volunteer, uh, step up for the uh, outreach lunch ministry. Thank you. Uh, rejuvenation of Sundays. I'm sorry? Uh huh. So I'm calling for grandma, mother, daughter to, to please bring all your kids. We love to have your kids during Sunday. Okay, so, so when, when is it going to be? Uh, we have a meeting that Sunday, so I, I, we are really ready to go for all of us to be active. That's what God is waiting for. Uh huh. So when is the so this Sunday? When? Every Sunday. Every Sunday. Okay. Okay. I thought was. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So pretty much everybody, right? Okay. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, we, we mentioned it because we did not put it in the bulletin, right? We mentioned it last Sunday, Judy, right? Okay. Okay. Jennifer's mother, Beth Crowin, who is having knee surgery Tuesday, and Jennifer is traveling to Boston uh, this week to see her and other family, Jennifer. Don't hear. So pray for uh, Jennifer's mother. Uh, okay. Anything that I missed? I'm sorry? Judy's food basket. Bob's birthday. Hey. Happy birthday, Bob. Any joys and concerns? Okay, let us pray. God, we came here today to worship you. And
then in fellowship with one another. That's the movement that, God, you want us to, to do it during this worship service. God, help us to see you and your people in our community so that we can hold our people, each other, hold each other in our heart. We have some family members who lost, lost their loved ones. God, it's really heartbreaking to see the loved ones passing. But God, we know the comfort and peace that you promise is the special that this world cannot give. So please provide your comfort and your care for the family members who lost their loved ones. God, in times of difficult and struggle, help us to remember you are with us. Help us to remember that you are always with us in every step of the way. God, help us to empower us with your spirit so that we can hold your hand and go with the direction that you want us to go with our Lord and Jesus Christ. We give you thanks that you did not really turn away from us and you did not leave us alone. God, we thank you. Help us to follow your direction in every day. Help us to refresh our heart so that we can see you and your direction and follow it. And so we continue to pray in prayer with a prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and we forgive trespasses as we forgive those trespasses. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of prayer. Amen. Uh, the ushers come forward for the offerings, and we have a special offertory music. Over the top? Quartet? Oh, yeah, over the top quartet. <laughs> and <laughs> over the hill quartet. Okay. <laughs> uh, give us a special offertory at praising. First, we should thank Joe for putting this together and getting the music for us so that we would do this. So thank you, Joe. <laughs> okay, I'll go back to the tiny harmonica. Yeah, now if I just won't keep singing Barry's part. <laughs> How many verses? 16 <laughs> verses.
storms with their flash ever frown. The streets I am told are paved with pure gold, and the sun is shall never go down. And when Jesus we meet, we will kneel at his feet and be warm by his unending love. It is just by God's grace that we'll come to that place and nothing there ever grows old. In that beautiful land on the faraway strand, no storms with their glass ever frown. The streets I am told are paved with pure gold, and the sun it shall never. Please join me in the offertory prayer. Renewing and refreshing God, fill our thirsty souls with your living water. As Jesus promised to the woman at the well, and as Jeremiah reminded the prophets, this water is ours if we keep our focus on you and don't chase after other gods. May the offering we make this day mark our commitment to keeping our eyes and our hearts set on a closer walk with you. We pray in the name of Jesus, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from the book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 41 through 13, verse 2. He sat down opposite the treasury and watch the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large amounts. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. As he came out of the temple, one of the disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another all will be thrown down. The word of the Lord. Okay, Donna, I think I did not really look closely about the basket. And uh, today's basket was donated by Donna, the honor of Bob's birthday yesterday. All right, thank you. I have this pressure every week that I need to come up with a really nice joke. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a, it's a good pressure. Don't worry about it. It's a good pressure. And I look up so many 
uh, books and some other stuff and uh, trying to find appropriate uh, joke so that we can all enjoy and listen and relate it to the joke with a sermon. So. But the, today's joke is not, it's not related to me because it's about mom. You know, I'm, a, I'm not a mom, but uh, mom about a thankfulness. You know, you remember the frog the joke that I uh, had before? I thought that was really funny because, you know, it's, it's about worship service and it's about, you know, uh, minister, you know, preaching the children's moment. You probably don't remember it, but anyway. I thought that was really funny, but you didn't laugh at so. <laughs> and this one, maybe I didn't think it's really funny, but you could laugh more, especially mothers. A group of mom, mothers, got together, made a list of things that they are really thankful for. All the list of things that they are really thankful for. Number one, dishwashers, automatic dishwashers. Listen, because they make it possible for us, mom, for us to get out of the kitchen before the family comes back in for their after dinner snack. <laughs> Number two, for husbands, surprise who attack small repair jobs around the house because, because they usually make them big enough to call in the professionals. <laughs> for children, number three, for children who put away their things and clean up after themselves. They are such a joy and you hate to see them go home to their own parents. <laughs> For teenagers, because they give parents an opportunity to learn a second language. And finally, for smoke alarms, because they will let you know when the turkey is done. Talking about different perspective, I have another one. It's, this is not a joke, but it's kind of interesting uh, to read, so I'm going to share with you. Two shoe salesmen were sent to Africa, where they found a number of people walking around without shoes. The one sent a telegram to his company back in America saying, Bad news, nobody wears shoes here. I'm packing to go back. While the other sent another telegram to the company saying, great news, no one wears shoes here. Send 5,000 pairs of shoes immediately. So it's a, it's a, they're looking at the same situation but totally come up with a different uh, perspective. How do we do it? How do we, we understand as a Christian living in this world every day? How can we see ourselves in the eyes of God? Not just our own perspective. You know, there are uh, several reasons that God gave this Bible for us. Then I believe that there are two important reasons that why God gave this Bible to us. The first and foremost important reason that I come up with is, is that through the Bible, we are finally able to understand our Creator. Through this Bible, as so, uh, you can see my uh, new newsletter for this month, I wrote about a Bible study, and I wrote this. 
how can we understand as a creatures understand how can we as a creature understand our creator how can we understand ourselves through the eyes of our god through the bible through the lens of the bible we are able to understand even just a little bit part of god area our creator area almighty god that we cannot possibly comprehend that's why god gave this bible to us in order so that we can we are able to little bit understand more about our creator i think this is a really important purpose of the bible so i encourage all of you to read the bible every day so that we are able to see God's plan toward you and me, our lives. The second important purpose of the Bible is through the Bible, we are able to see the direction of our life. There are so many stories in the Bible, God's people, how they lived, how they had a relationship with God, how they thought about the laws and regulations that God gave it to to them, how they react to the guidance of God. That's all recorded in the Bible. And as we read the Bible, we are able to indirectly gain experience as a Christian, as a children of God, as children of God, that how we live our lives. Through, as we read the Bible, we have to find out the relationship that God's people had. Some understanding, some different understanding of laws and regulations. That's all recorded in the Bible. So that our forefathers of faith lived in the past, not just in the past, but still make a difference in our lives as we read the Bible. That's the second most important reason, purpose of the Bible. So we should read the Bible every day. There was a long introduction, but the reason I did this long introduction is that how can relate, how can learn from the word that we read today? What if? The scripture that we read today contains far more important than we did not understand in the past. You know, today's uh, scripture, we read last part of Mark chapter 12 and the beginning part of chapter 13. We usually, when we read the Bible, we go with the, all these divided chapters. But, you know, division of chapters was not in the first writing of the Bible. Later, people divided chapters so that people would be able to understand better, understanding of the Bible. But when we look at the last part of chapter 12 and the first part of chapter 13, there are two different stories. A widow put in not much worth of offering in the temple treasury. And then right after that, talk about destruction of magnificent building of the temple Jerusalem. You see, it's a two, these two different two, two stories seems to be very different stories, but in fact, you know, these two stories are in a same context. If you look closely, I believe that we are able to understand a little bit more about God, a little bit more about God's perspective upon our agenda, our standard. At the end of 
uh, chapter 12. Jesus saw a widow put in two lepton or one gorant into the treasury. But as soon as he saw this widow put in money, not worth of money in terms of uh, world standard, he just praised the widow and giving her all that she had and praised her. That's all. That's exactly God was looking for. He said this, verse 44, they all gave out their, of all of their worth. They means other wealthy people. But she, out of her poverty, poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. That's NIV version. A different version is this. They all put out of their abundance, but out of her poverty, this widow put in all that she had, all she had to live on. The story ends right there and move on to chapter 13. It's not like a, the story was closed very well, but she left, it seems like she left out. Did not really close enough. And then moving on to the next chapter that we see the great temple in Jerusalem. And Jesus said, this temple will destroy, torn down, leaving no stone on top of it. And disciples was, were shocked and asked Jesus, when, when will that happen? These two stories. While I'm talking about destruction of temple, keep your mind in this widow stories, unclosed yet widow stories in your mind. I don't know how exactly the structure of this great temple in Jerusalem. Because the, this uh, you know, structure was destroyed and we don't know exactly what kind of structure there was. As we read today's scripture based on the reaction from the disciples, it's a huge, amazing, magnificent, whatever the adjective follows. I don't have like enough adjective to describe it. Archaeologists, some archaeologists said that there's a, uh, this temple building is Tremendous speak and huge and magnificent. Wonderful building that people, even just the first, when you, you see the building first, you cannot really comprehend the size of it. White marble stones pile up high and so many fancy ways that you can see it. They were astonished at the magnificence of, of the building. That's why chapter 13, first verse, described this. As Jesus was going out of the temple, one of the disciples said to him, Teacher, what are these stones? Even this country boy could not understand what kind of stone that they use in order to build a structure. Structure. What are these buildings? Look at, teacher, what a massive stones, what a magnificent buildings. Keep the widow story in your mind. As Jesus and the disciples look at the building, it was unimaginable that this temple of Jerusalem will fall and no stone will be left on top of it. That's what Jesus said, and that's what will happen. Compared to this huge 
structure of the temple. And poor widow put in two lepton's in a treasury. Why do you think this uh, uh, temple, Jerusalem temple, fall? On the scripture, disciple asked Jesus this question. When Jesus said that this temple is, is not going to stand, disciple asked him, when? When that will happen? We did not read the verse 4, but verse 4 said, tell us when will this thing be? And what will be the sign when all these things are about to come to pass? When? Tell us when these things will happen. But the real question the disciple should have asked Jesus should have asked Jesus was question of why? Why? Why this magnificent Jerusalem temple fall down? Why? In the Bible, we can find so many stories uh, that God destroyed this magnificent building structures. Can you recall some of them? In Old Testament, there's a story about Tower of Babel. Tower of Babel could be really big structure, but it's destroyed. The story of indestructible walls of Jericho, where walls that seems never fall, but came down. What about the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham's nephew Lot saw it and it's beautiful. And now in the Gospel of Mark today, this magnificent temple, Jerusalem, will be destroyed. Why question? Why? There's only one reason why this magnificent temple of Jerusalem was destroyed. We can learn from the, the story of Tower of Babel. We can learn from the city of Jericho. We can learn from the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Destruction comes from the self-righteousness, destruction caused because people challenged God's authority. People put themselves ahead and higher than God. That's why this destruction came to the cities and structures. Destruction of the Temple of Jerusalem is very similar. And this is a very serious matter for believers. Because, think about it, some other structures originally built, like uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and uh, uh, walls of Jericho, all this structure, amazing structure, originally built for human purpose. But this temple of Jerusalem was originally built for the purpose of faith. The symbol of faith. Symbol of Israelites respecting God. Symbol of the magnificent authority they celebrate. The reign of God. That's why this destruction of this temple of Jerusalem is very serious for believers. But the thing is, the original purpose of the temple of Jerusalem was already destroyed. 
the original purpose was changed, manipulated, abused. The original purpose was already gone. So the purpose of, was originally, original purpose was destroyed. And uh, people pursued the power of authority. The religious leaders only care about their power, their authority. The original purpose was gone. So even the structure is standing, but the foundation is destroyed already. You know, you heard the, one of the parables of Jesus Christ. We learned from the Sunday school. Building a house on a rock, building a house on the sand. Which one standing? building house on the rock. That lesson was about foundational faith. If we lose the true foundational faith, the true purpose of faith is gone, then the total destruction of a house will come. That's the lesson from the parables of Jesus Christ. It's the same thing that today's message that Jesus was talking about destruction because the foundational concept of the temple is already destroyed, manipulated, and changed. Again, remember the widow story in your back of your head? The story of this poor widow and compared to this huge, magnificent structure building. Grand and splendid, huge temple of Jerusalem became the symbol of people's authority and power. The leader's power and authority, not about God. Yet, this widow put in small amount of money in a treasury, acknowledging the power and authority of God. My brothers and sisters in Christ, faith, our faith is not about building ourselves up. Our faith is rather destroy and lower ourselves in the presence of God. It's not about building our boundaries. It's not about building our power and authority. Faith is about lower and humble ourselves in the presence of God. That's about faith. As we lower ourselves in the presence of God, we are able to see God's hand and God's guidance pulling us to the direction that God wants us to go. As we lower ourselves and humble ourselves, we are align, be able to align ourselves to the almighty God who is strong, who created these worlds. That's why our faith should be not about building ourselves, not about gaining power, authority for ourselves, but about God. You know, we did uh, today in a Lord's Prayer too. The prayer that Jesus Christ taught us, there's a key phrase that we should remember all the time. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What do you feel when, as we pray this special prayer about thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven? How do you feel? What are you thinking about 
while you're doing this prayer. Thy kingdom come. What does that mean? As we pray about God's kingdom come upon us, that means, hear me, hear me. That means my kingdom is no more. My kingdom is no more as God's kingdom come upon us. Thy kingdom come means I no longer be the Lord of my kingdom. But our God, our Lord, is the true Lord and God of God's kingdom. As we pray, the kingdom of God come upon us. Think about it. There's no my kingdom. We need to keep demolishing our kingdom. Keep low ourselves. Keep humble ourselves in the presence of God. In the kingdom of God. As the kingdom of God comes to us, my kingdom is no longer exist. In other words, as the kingdom of God expand in my life, I no longer become the master of my life. My kingdom is diminished. This is the true meaning of thy kingdom come. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the Bible clearly telling us our own splendid, magnificent temple. Think about it. The magnificent, splendid temple that I have been building should be destroyed in order to die kingdom come. You know what? Higher, the higher you build your kingdom, the bigger and harder you build your kingdom, the more severe collapse of your kingdom will be. Some people comment about last sermon, last week's sermon about shaking uh, you out of shakers? Seems like you, you love that. You're the salt, and you try to stay in a shaker, comfortable and nice, then God will shake you out. It's the same thing. As you build your splendid, magnificent, your kingdom, your temple, then the destroy will come very hard. I really pray that as we expecting our God's kingdom come into our lives, let us lower, let us destroy our kingdom. Let our God and Lord be the Lord. Let them handle the situation we are facing. That's thy kingdom come. Next time, as you, as us, all pray the Lord's Prayer, think about how it it will look like God's kingdom come into life. Today's sermon title is Thy Kingdom Come and Be Question Mark. Really? Do you really want God's kingdom come into your life? That means I am destroying my kingdom. There's no my kingdom exist. That's what really you are expecting. Really. Thy kingdom come. This widow build. God's kingdom 
with all her heart, give it to the uh, Lord. That's what we should do. Let us pray. Our Creator, we come before you with our humble hearts, acknowledging that you are our Creator. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is heaven. Help us not to conform the pattern of this world. And help us not to build our own kingdom in the presence of you. A kingdom that only for our glory, our power, our authority. Help us, God, to live our lives with your presence in your kingdom, seeking your love and grace, seeking that and confess that our law is the Lord. God, we thank you that you challenge us this morning with a message. Help us to continue to pray that thy kingdom come into our lives. In the name of our Lord and Savior, amen. Would you please stand for closing him? Wait a minute. It's not count. <laughs> Are you sure I surrender all for the kingdom of God? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it, as it is in heaven. But the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit will be with you now and forever. Amen.